Hello there, and welcome to another video debunking the flat earth idea. And it's been a couple of months since I've made a video on this. And to be honest, I'm, I wasn't really expecting to be making any more on this. But the flat earth idea is still very big online at the moment. And... I don't know why people are still talking about it. It doesn't make the slightest bit of sense. So it's worth making another video about it. Now in this video, I'm really going to be looking at things I've talked about before in other videos, but just going over it again. It's always worth going over it again because it doesn't seem to matter how many times people see this. It doesn't seem to sink in with them that the evidence makes a flat earth impossible and the only reasonable conclusion from what the evidence that we know about the world is that the Earth is a sphere. So anyway, what I'm going to be looking at is what the Sun is doing in the Southern Hemisphere at this time of year. So it's worth looking at this now because this is the time of year in which the Sun is doing things in the Southern Hemisphere which are particularly contradictory to what you would expect on the flat Earth model. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at three different locations around the Southern Hemisphere, quite far south, and look on the website timeanddate.com as to what the sun is doing at those locations. So let's look here. The first one is in South Africa, so we'll go to Cape Town. So I'll type in your Cape Town, South Africa. And... <clears throat> We'll go to here, the 4th of November, which is today. Now it tells you here that the sun rises at 5.43 in the morning and it rises at 109 degrees, which is 19 degrees south of east. Now already there, the flat earth model is in trouble. It's just not what you would expect. Now in this diagram here, we can get an idea of what the sun does over the course of a day. Now if you look over here to the right of the screen, you can see there's this little arrow here. And that tells you what direction you'd expect to see the sun in at different times of the day. So if we go to sunrise, which is 5.43, you can see that arrow is pointing to 109 degrees, which is, like I said, 19 degrees um, south of east, east-southeast it's called. So the sun starts there, comes into view there, or rises there, whatever you want to call it. And then it comes around and then goes north of your location. And then in the middle of the day, at its zenith, it's at 71 degrees. And then it comes round and goes to the west and then ends up going south of west. Not quite as far south as southwest, but it's going south of west. So if you were in Cape Town and you were facing the North Pole, facing north or facing the North Pole, the sun would appear or rise over your right shoulder, sort of somewhere behind your right shoulder. Then it would come round to being right in front of you and then it would go to your left or to the west and it would end up behind your left shoulder. Now, that is completely contradictory to what you'd expect on the flat earth. It doesn't even begin to tally up with what you see on what you'd expect on a flat earth. Now, Let's try another location. So that's Cape Town, South Africa. Let's go way down south to New Zealand. And we'll try Christchurch in New Zealand. So Christchurch, New Zealand, there is. So same thing. Now, today is the 5th in New Zealand, so, um, so it's the same thing. You can see the sun, well, it tells you here, the sun rises at 112 degrees here, so that's 22 degrees 
south of east. And again, if you watch the little arrow here on the right hand side of the screen, that shows you the, the direction you'd see the sun in. So you start to see the sun um, over again over your right shoulder. It goes right round in front of you, so it's directly north of you, reaching a zenith of 62 degrees in the sky. And it sweeps round to your left, and then goes behind your left shoulder. This is all while if you're facing north. A similar thing that you would see in Cape Town. Again, it's just completely um, not compatible with the flat Earth model. It just doesn't fit with it at all. Now, we'll do one more. We'll go to South America. And there's a place here that I found. Now, um, I'll try and pronounce it. I think it's Punto Arenas. Arenas. Punto Arenas Arenas. Forgive me if I've got the pronunciation wrong if you're from there. So, Punta. Oops. Arenas in Chile. And it's the fourth, and similar story, 117 degrees it's rising up there. Um, so that's 27 degrees south of east. Okay. So again, if you look at the little arrow down here on the right, the sun rises or comes into view at 117 degrees. Again, behind your right shoulder if you're facing north. Sweeps right round to be in front of you, right, in, so it's directly north of where you are if you're facing north. Sorry, it'll be directly in front of you if you're facing north, so it's directly north of you, and it reaches an altitude of 52 degrees there. Now, bear in mind, this is much further south. And then it goes right round till it's right behind your left shoulder. So it's, it's setting at 241 degrees, 242 degrees. Um... Again, I mean, if, you see, if you're seeing this at any one of these locations, it's a kind of a nail in the coffin for the flat earth model. But the fact that you're seeing the same thing at three different locations in the Southern Hemisphere, right round the Southern Hemisphere, is it's just not possible if the earth is flat. You cannot be seeing this if the earth is flat. It just, it's impossible. Now, let's have a look at the flat earth model. Now, this is supposed to be the flat earth model. And I've drawn on a circle that is, this yellow circle is roughly where the sun is at the moment. It's not quite as far south as the Tropic of Capricorn yet. So it's roughly moving in a circle like this, according to flat earth anyway. Now, I'll get the pen tool, so yeah, I've got it up. So we, first of all, we went down to South, uh, South Africa, so we were about here, and we found that the sun in that location did something like this. Then we went to Christchurch in New Zealand, which is about there, and we found that the sun did something like this. And then we went to uh, Punto Arenas in <coughs> Chile and we found that the sun did something like this. Now, like I said, I, I've touched on this before. I did quite a similar video to this before, but um, this is just impossible. You cannot have the sun moving in a circle like this and be seen to be doing what it does at these locations. It just doesn't work. And you wouldn't just see it at these locations. Anywhere you chose in the southern hemisphere, you would see this, a similar shape like this. You would see that at any point. Now, we know that the sun moves in a giant circle, whether you believe it's the Earth is a sphere or whether it's flat. We know it's moving in a giant circle. So these all must form circles, but they can only be, they can, must all be the same circle. There's only one sun. 
So we've got to consider geometrically how do we get all these circles to coincide? Well, there is only one solution, one reasonable, feasible solution, which is if you curve the earth around and then underneath itself, and so it forms into a sphere, then all of these circles, the orange ones, will coincide with the yellow one, and there will only be one path for the sun. It's the only solution to, these, to this information. So if you want to argue that Earth is flat, you really got your work cut out for you. You're going to have to prove that the sun doesn't do this in the southern hemisphere. And, well, you're, you're not really going to manage that because that is what the sun does in the southern hemisphere. What the sun is doing in the southern hemisphere at this time of year proves that the Earth cannot possibly be flat. And that the only reasonable geometric interpretation of what the sun is doing is that the earth is a sphere, like this. Because that allows for all the information that you're seeing. So, once again, we find out that the flat earth model is just a disaster area that cannot account for what we see and we find out again that the spherical earth model accounts exactly for what we see.